Hey friends, Adam Wilbur here. As always, thank you so much for trusting me with some of your time. In today's video, we're gonna talk about 10 activities that will encourage creativity in your children. For me, I'm in the middle of winter here in New Hampshire. I've got my kids all weekend and I'd like to not spend a lot of money, but still do some things that are going to encourage creativity. Activities that are fun, but are also helping them understand the importance of creativity. So without further ado, we'll dive right into this video on 10 ways to encourage your children into thinking and acting more creatively. Let's check it out. Now the first one is one of my favorite. It's aspire to be an architect. Now the way I set this up is bring my children to a playground or a museum that has some really cool architecture. Playgrounds seem to work great for me because my children are five and seven years old. So while we're at the playground, we'll discuss what pieces of this playground do you like the most and why? We'll have kind of a thought about that. We'll play around in the playground and then when we get home, we're going to design our own playground. And this is a lot easier than it sounds. We'll start with some simple graph paper and sketch out the things that they had the most fun on. So we'll start with those and we'll start building off of that. There is no right or wrong to this. It's truly about letting your children imagine the best playground they could possibly dream up. Once you've gotten that drawn out on graph paper, and it might be up to you to help them sketch some of it out, but then you start piecing it together in real life. And this is with things like popsicle sticks, straws, building blocks, Legos, things that you've got around the house. The whole point of this is to have fun thinking up their ideal playground. At the end of it, you may have a disaster or you may have a really cool piece of architecture. Either way, the idea is to get them thinking about if they could have their dream playground, what would that look like? All right, number two is super fun. It's inventing your own superhero. So what I like to do is ask my children first and foremost, do you know what a superhero is? If they do, great, if not, I explain it, either through Superman or Spider-Man or some video clips, things of that nature. And then I ask them, if you were a superhero, what would you want your superpower to be? I give them a couple examples. Mine are always stopping time, the cloak of invisibility, teleportation, things of that nature. But I let them decide what their superpower would be. Give them some suggestions and let them come up with whatever they'd like. You'd be amazed at some of the things they say. And a really cool thing is some of the things that they will say that they wish they had as superpowers, you as a parent will be able to give them. You'll have to take my word for this, but just dive into this, have them dream up as many superpowers as possible. And then once you have the strong structure of a superhero, start drawing that out with them. What colors are the capes? Do they wear eye masks? Do they wear special uniforms? But really start piecing this together. Now start drawing it. You're going to start building this into reality. You can either draw it on paper. You can take a doll and start putting pieces on it. For instance, cut a cape out of an old towel. But the idea is to then get tactile with these ideas. So first dream up what this superhero is, what their superpowers are, and then start putting it together into reality. I love this activity. I've done it a few times with my kids. And and each time we do it, the superpowers change and in turn, so does the superhero. The next activity is one that's near and dear to my heart because who doesn't love this? Find ways to laugh. Fill up that laugh jar in as many ways as possible. The easiest way for me is to go to the local library that doesn't cost anything. We go to the comic section and we start flipping through the comics. Now I'll ask my kids specifically, what's funny to you? What makes you laugh? And if my daughter who's five doesn't read so well at this early age, I'll read to her and I'll just take notes. What's making her laugh? And then when we get home, we'll try and draw up a comic of our own. We'll start with a character and then a plot. What is this character doing? What does the scene look like? And we'll try and make humor out of it. We've gotten some really, really fun times together as a family by drawing up our own cartoons and comics. So whatever way you know how, laugh. When you can tell your kids that, hey, today's activities, all we're gonna do is focus on laughing, it is a wonderful way to spend time with your family and know from the start that today is just about humor and laughter. It's a great way to kick off the day and a super fun activity, especially when you get your children to start helping you build your own comic. Now, the next activity is to take a dream vacation. Now, you're not really going on this dream vacation, but you're planning it out. You're gonna sit down with your children and say, hey, we have all the money in the world, we have all the means in the world, where are we gonna go and what are we gonna do? and then draw that up with them. The more you do it, the more you realize what your children really enjoy doing, and it forces them to think about that. Hey, what do I want to do if I'm bored? And that's one really, really important thing on encouraging creative thinking in your children, is to allow them to be bored. Hey, right now we're not having any fun. We're bored. This seems dull. 
how do we change that? If we could travel anywhere in the world, would we go to Disneyland? Would we go to a zoo? Would we go to Mars? What would we do and why? What adventures would we have if we went on a trip like this? You'll start building this anticipation about one of these adventures. And if you find that your kids keep coming to this same dream adventure over and over, well then you know what your goal is. Start saving up and be able to take your kids on that dream adventure. One of the really neat things that happens is you'll see you almost manifest this adventure into reality. You start really ironing out exactly what this is gonna feel like, sound like, taste like, what fun are we gonna have, what are we actually gonna do. When you have all this scripted out with your children, when you actually go on that adventure, you can start checking off all the things that you guys dreamed up. And it's a really cool way to show your kids that you can dream into reality. Anything that you can think up or manifest into your life with enough dedication and hard work, you can make that a reality. My advice is this, if you do take them on this dream vacation, let's say it's Disneyland, let them know all the hard work that went into planning that to be able to afford it. There's nothing wrong with letting your kids know at a very early age that things aren't free. Some things that you want to do take a lot of dedication and hard work. And a trip to Disneyland or something of the sort is the perfect way to lead by example. Now this is a really fun activity that I found online and I've tried a couple times. It is extremely fun. See, here's the thing. My kids argue. I'm not gonna lie or deny it. Most kids do. And a lot of times it's silly what they're arguing over. For instance, I wanna play this game or that game. I want to watch this TV show. I want to have popcorn with butter, without butter. So what you're going to do in this activity is to build a political campaign. Now I know that sounds heavy for kids and you're not going to explain to them what politics are and all of that. All you're going to do is set up a debate, a friendly debate that ends in some sort of conclusion. Here's a perfect example. One of my children wants to play Monopoly while the other one wants to play Candyland. So what we're going to do is build a political platform on those two topics. My Monopoly child is going to set up an argument of why Monopoly might be more fun or beneficial to us to play and vice versa for Candyland. And then the next step is to build posters or propaganda if you will, things that will help articulate their argument. So really you're forcing them to think creatively about the advantages and disadvantages of what they're offering, whether it's a game, an outdoor activity, what's for dinner, what movie we're going to watch. You let them build an argument based off facts and then you take that argument and you put it into the real world with posters, catchphrases, slogans, everything you may see in a political campaign, minus all the nasty, built right into your own home to teach your kids debate, argument, and how to articulate the point that they're trying to make in a fun, but easily digestible way. I know this seems like a lot, especially for younger kids, but just try it out. It's a lot more fun than you may think. This next activity is super fun, but it's also helpful for the rest of your family or, or friends. You're gonna start a family blog. This may start off as a every Saturday thing or a once or twice a week thing. That's up to you. But the idea is to just write about your family and to do this with your children, get them involved. You could start on every Saturday and say, let's talk about the highlights of this week. For me, I would say to my son, Carter, what was the biggest highlight the thing that made you smile and laugh the most this entire week. And then I would ask my daughter the same thing. And they would watch as I write that out. I would ask them how they want to phrase that. Are there any images that they would like to put into the blog and let them know, hey, all of our family and friends are going to see this. It's a really fun way for them to keep up to date with what we're doing. And see that lets your children know that there's a bunch of people that care about what they're doing. Now you may find the first couple times you ask questions like what was the coolest thing that happened this week? You get a little pushback because it's hard for them to remember that, but through practice they will start remembering and they'll start taking notes. The nice thing about that is if they're going through their day or their week and they're mentally taking notes of the things that make them happy, it's a great way to start practicing gratitude at a very young age. So you're not just telling them, hey, be grateful for the things you have. You're asking them, hey, the friends and family that we love and that love us want to know about our week. What was the coolest and most fun thing that happened to you this week? It's a really cool way to start planting those seeds of gratitude. And there's a lot of science behind the idea that gratitude helps lead to a more creative mind. And to be honest, gratitude in general is one of the best gifts you could give your children. Start teaching them the importance of gratitude at an early age and it will become second nature as they grow older. Now this activity is one that I love doing with my children. We become our own producers. So what does that mean? Well, we make our family videos. This could be an adventure, this could be a bank robbery. This is specifically fun for me now because it's so cold outside, it's hard to do outdoor activities. So I can use my entire house 
is our movie set. So we'll set the scene first. We'll sit down and say, what's this movie about? Are we gonna be laughing? Is this a serious movie? Is this a scary movie? And then we start building off of that. Who are the characters in this movie? Well, it's just me and my two kids with our animals. So we've got five characters that we could use. Six if you include the cat, but our cat's a little finicky and doesn't like to act very much. So we'll leave it to five, but you get the idea. You're going to build a movie with your family, with your kids, and it can be anything that they dream up. And then you as the parent get to do your best job to make that a reality. For instance, our last movie was a space adventure. And what we did for the space adventure was I made a little suit out of some old rags. I gave them helmets that were space hats and we built a little structure in my son's room, which was our spaceship. And I am the producer, so I got my phone out and filmed it. We scripted a little bit. It took us two days, but we put together a really cool clip of our spaceship adventure. It's a great way to document memories, but also it forces them to think creatively. What do you want to happen in this movie? Because anything can happen. We could have aliens come down. It's a really great way to force them to come up with their own story. And then you as the parent get to help bring that story to life. And then you've always got a visual representation saved on a hard drive or posted online, but something they can go back to. Imagine how cool it would be in 30 or 40 years for your children to open that video and remember the fun they had building these stories with you. I know personally, I can't wait to share that experience with my kids when they're much older. The next activity is to explore the galaxies. Now what I mean by that is to start talking about outer space. Now there's a really cool iPhone app that lets you do this on a level unimaginable five, six years ago. You can quite literally take the iPhone, put it up into the sky and it will show you where every planet and star is. It's, it's unbelievable. Now this activity for my kids is a way to let them know that this world is massive, that there's a lot of things that they may not understand and that's okay. Now there's a lot of science that says children get much more satisfaction out of building something than just thinking about or talking about it. So start with thinking and talking. Show them the app and what the stars are and then have them build something out of it. You could have your children build their own galaxy. Maybe Earth is the center and the sun is closer than normal, but the idea is to get them building. You could take a balloon and make a paper mache planet. You could have them build their own dream galaxy where everything is perfect and there's their own creatures on it. But have them build something from what they just learned about our solar system and how massive our universe really is. You may be surprised at what they come up with and you may get a chuckle out of it as well. Now this next activity is a little harder than I thought at first, but it's to write a song with your children. Now personally, I have very little to no musical talent, but there is an amazing thing out there called Google. All you have to do is Google homemade instruments, homemade songs for my children, and you'll get a plethora of ways that you can actually invent a song with your children. This is really, really fun. It helps with rhyme schemes, it helps with timing, it helps them learn the importance of music in your everyday life and how music can help aid in emotions. It's been a really fun activity sharing with my children. I'm learning a little bit more about music and in all honesty, I'm learning more and more about how bad at music I am. I'm very tone deaf, but the skill of being able to put words together so they have emotional meaning to your listener is something I am very happy to be teaching my children. Now, I'll be honest and say we haven't written any Billboard Top 20s, but that's not to say I'm not sparking some sort of creativity in my children that will turn into something long standing. If you don't have musical instruments around the house, you can make them. If you want to leave the music out of it, then start writing poetry with your children. Let them know about poetry and what it means, that sometimes you can disguise meaning in words so the words don't have to mean what they are at face value. It's a really interesting way to get your kid's mind opened up to this idea of language and that language has a lot of power behind it. And if you can learn to perfect your language so it has impact on people, that is one of the best things you could teach your children. Now here's the reality. We don't know what the future is gonna hold. We don't know what kind of jobs are gonna be available for our kids. But what we do know is people who have creative problem-solving skills are going to be far better off no matter what the future holds than those that don't. And if we can inspire and educate these skills at a young age, especially language skills and creative language skills, that's gonna help our children excel in any path they choose in life. There's really no job in life that wouldn't be easier if you had a better vocabulary and knew how to use your words to make an impact on people. 
So start teaching them now with fun things like coming up with a song together, writing a poem together, using words in a way that they may not be accustomed to. And the last way is to just celebrate moments every day. You get on Google and you say, what is today's national holiday? Almost every day of the year, there'll be something to celebrate. You don't have to go off what the national holidays are. You can make up your own reasons to celebrate. The idea is to get your kids used to this celebration of everything all the time. Now, I'm not saying just pretend to be happy even when times are rough, but I am saying wake up and start each day with the idea there's something to celebrate. And the best way to do that is to start finding things to celebrate. It could be National Dog Day, and if you have a dog, great. Hey, today we're celebrating that we have a dog. It could be National Sibling Day or National Boss Day, Boss Recognition Day. All of these things are a great way to encourage your kids to think creatively on how you could celebrate that. For instance, my kids and I celebrate National Siblings Day. I love my sister to death. She's been my rock throughout my entire life, and I hope the same happens for my kids. So what I did on National Siblings Day was say, hey, there's one rule. You both have to do something nice that explains to your brother and sister why you love them so much. That seems very simple, but for a five and a seven-year-old, it was very hard to articulate that. Probably very hard for a five and seven-year-old to grasp the understanding of what love is in general, but that's where you as the parent get to help. We sat down and both of them wrote really beautiful, nice things about the experiences they've had with each other. It was amazing. So I plan on doing this every single year. But you can do that with anything. On National Pet Day, you could make a special treat or dog toy for your dog or cat. There's something to celebrate every day. So why not start training your kids on doing it right now? It's another great way to inspire gratitude. And if you can gift your children gratitude and a deep understanding of the importance of it, you'll be setting them up for success in a way that just can't be replaced. So there you have it. A few activities that you can do with your children that don't cost a lot of money, but that do encourage creative thinking and problem solving. I hope you get out there and try one or two of these. Better yet, try them all. If you have some activities that you do that are encouraging creativity in your children, please shoot me an email or drop a comment in the link below. As always, thanks for being here. And until next time, my friends, onward.